Hi, my name is Sarah McLean, and I'm happy to be meditating with you today. I wanted to talk a little bit about waking up. What does it mean to wake up when you're referring to spiritual growth or spiritual awareness? Well, this morning, I was sleeping, just like you were, probably. And then there was this moment, this transition period, when I went from not knowing where I was in time and space and being completely rested to opening my eyes slightly and then closing them again and then listening to the sounds of the birds as they chirp to greet the dawn. I didn't really move fully into being awake until I started to move my body, stretch a little bit, become aware of where I was and I checked the time and I thought, okay, now I'm awake. And I was thinking about talking to you about waking up. Some people say that waking up in the spiritual realm is to become aware of who you really are and, and to transcend the limitations of your mind and of your senses so that you wake up to the interconnectedness of all life. So you wake up to who you really are that beingness of you, this expanded awareness that you are, the one who's listening to me now. Waking up is something that people talk about in terms of um, spiritual progress. And we've talked before about states of consciousness. So there are three that you're always dwelling in and out of. There's waking state, where you are now. There's the dream state, when you were sleeping, there's some mental activity. You see things, you hear things in your dream state where you're very rested. And then there's deep sleep state where I woke out of, where you probably woke out of too this morning. So those are the three states most people dwell in and out of. When you add meditation, you're adding a fourth state of consciousness. It's called transcendental consciousness where you transcend the relative world and the bonds of thought and the bonds of limitations to experience no thing, to experience this field of awareness, this field of love, this field of balance and perfection and creativity, the source from which everything arises. Waking up from that, you start to wake out of your everyday existence and move into a realm where you see more clearly. And there are three more states of consciousness that are talked about quite a bit, about seeing beyond the senses, about experiencing yourself as all things, and about dwelling in a field where there are unseen beings, there are so many things that can happen when you wake up to the expanded awareness, when you wake up to that. Now, what I, I was reading a little bit in Shambhala Sun Magazine from Pema Chodron's Four Keys to Waking Up. And Pema Chodron is a, an American woman who dedicated herself, dedicated herself to a, a Tibetan Buddhist path. And she's been on this path for years and years. And here are her four keys. Her four keys are stabilizing your mind, making friends with yourself, being free from a fixed mind, and in accordance with the Tibetan Buddhist path is to take care of others. So to stabilize your mind simply means to be less reactive, less reactive, to be more present and unshakable. This is what we practice in meditation. It's really about learning to enjoy your experience and you don't have to tense up to establish a new normal in a relaxed, watchful way without reacting and having preferences, without clinging and resisting. Waking up in meditation and includes stabilizing the mind to this present moment.
to being right here instead of avoiding what's happening. And we do that in meditation so that we can practice that as we're walking, walking in our worlds. The second was to make friends with yourself. Pema Chodron talks about gentleness. Meditation is very, very gentle, and it establishes a gentleness that we really portray in our lives with ourselves and with the people around us. We become a friend to ourselves. One of the five essentials I always talk about is to be kind to yourself, to be gentle to yourself. It's like having a true friend. You don't, um, you know yourself. You don't think you're greater than you are. You don't put yourself on a pedestal. You know you disagree sometimes, but you remain friends. You're friends with yourself, and it's based on knowing yourself and still loving each other. It's called self-compassion. So making friends with yourself is something we do when our eyes are closed and we're meditating. It always is important to practice that instead of beating ourselves up. That does not help. It is a bad habit. Many, many of us have. The next key to waking up, according to Pema Chodron, is to be free from a fixed mind. For me, this is the key to waking up, being free from the limitations of our ideas of the way things are, of our being established solely in the sense fields. A fixed mind is stuck and inflexible. It has beliefs, it has ideas, it has labels, it's closed down. It's the common state for most of us. And you can see it, in, in as Pema Children says, in the world of politics. Say you're an environmentalist. One of these, in this um, article, it says, what you're working for is really important, but with a fixed mind comes in, the other side is the enemy. You become prejudiced and close, and it makes you less <clears throat> effective as an activist. On a spiritual path, being free from a fixed mind helps us to see all sides. Some people call it free from the fixed mind is being in what Deepak Chopra calls or Wayne Dyer discusses as the gap. It's that open awareness that's revealed that's underlying all thoughts and beliefs. It doesn't happen because you want it to in meditation, but it is the place you can dwell when you move into meditation without too much effort. This is also what we create as a new normal. Waking up becomes the new normal, but being free from a fixed mind is something that you cultivate in your meditation practice. The fourth key to waking up, according to Pema Chodron, is to take care of others. Take care of others. That is, that is the goal of many Tibetan Buddhists, is to dwell in loving kindness and to take care of all all people around them, all living beings. It's actually one of the vows I took in the monastery. It says, sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. Our true nature is to be more open and receptive and defenseless. And with meditation, we learn not to shut down and we learn to trust that life loves us and everyone who's in our world is capable of this and we love them. We also know that because we've loved ourselves and we appreciate our own human condition, we can see others clearly and we can understand that they suffer the same way we do. I call it bearing witness. With meditation, when you close your eyes and you, you have these thoughts that you want to run from or these sensations that you're not normally staying present for, you learn to stay present and bear witness to your own personal suffering, your disappointment, your fears, your physical pain. And as you do that in your meditation, you're able to then, as you walk in the world, bear witness to the suffering that you see around you, whether it's emotional suffering of a friend physical suffering where people might run the other way or even suffering you hear about on the news or see in a homeless person on the corner. 
So staying very present for this and having a prayer in your heart. There are, there's these four ancient lines from the Buddhist sage, Shanti Deva. And now, as long as space endures, as long as there are beings to be found, may I continue likewise to remain, to drive away the sorrows of the world. May I continue to remain. May this presence continue to remain. Free from, sh free from fear, free from suffering, free from closing down to all that is. That's really what waking up is, is to awaken to every flavor, every aspect of life without shutting down, limiting our minds, limiting our awareness because of some sense of fear or pain. So let's meditate. So find yourself a comfortable place to sit. It's best if you don't lie down. We're trying to establish an awake, an awake sense, a wakefulness. And when we're lying down and closing our eyes, some, some deep sleep may get involved with that. I was just recently at a training and um, one woman insisted she should lie down and the, the 20 of us in the room got to listen to her snore for our entire meditation. So if unless you've got a serious back issue... Do not lie down. Sit comfortably. Find the support you need for your back. If you can, sit relatively upright and we'll begin. So if your eyes are still open, just gaze around your room, gaze around the place you sit, and all that that keeps you company, let that, let those images be received. And you can begin to close your eyes easily and give yourself some slow, long, deep breaths through your nose. And then let your breath return to its natural rhythm and depth. And remember throughout this meditation that you'll maintain a natural, gentle relationship with your breath. Don't try to force it or get it to do certain things. Allow it to settle down if it wants to or deepen if it needs to. Pay attention right now to the sounds that you hear. Whether it's my voice that arises out of the silence and returns to the silence. Or the sound of a ticking clock. Or whatever you hear, just allow the sounds to meet your awareness. Maintaining in a non-judgmental quality and a wakefulness. As you bear witness to all sounds.
If, you're, if your mind travels, you can go ahead and bring it right here, back to the sounds and the listening. All sounds are in the present moment. Now begin to bear witness to the sensations that you feel in your body. Notice the sensation of sitting. Of leaning. Notice the sensation of hands. Bear witness to the physical sensation of heaviness. Lightness. Witness the sensation of stillness. Of movement. Bear witness to the sensation of breath. Can you remain a non judgmental witness to your own breath? Bear witness to the movement of your breath and the stillness of your breath. Bear witness to the various temperatures of the air moving in and out. Remember to be kind to yourself throughout this meditation. If your attention drifts from what's happening right here to a thought, just gently bring it right back here, right back to the sensation of the body and the sensation of the breath. And if you need a silent mantra to maintain this present moment mindful presence, then you can simply say in silently to yourself as you breathe in and out silently as you breathe out. Sometimes the mind needs a focus that it can attend to. So 
Sometimes with meditation we transcend, and sometimes we remain right here in this mindful state of awake, being awake, bearing witness to our lives. This practice is about deeply experiencing your life, your sitting, your breathing, your listening, your sensations, versus being sidetracked by a story about your life. It's the direct experience rather than the story. So stay right here with the direct experience rather than your thoughts about it. avoiding all labels, be right here as you listen and you feel. This is your only job. Listen and feel.
every time your attention drifts away, bring it right back here to listening and feeling. Don't live ahead of yourself. Don't dream about the future right now. Stay right here where your life is meeting the moment. Listening and feeling. Continue to listen, to feel, to bear witness to the sensation of being alive without judgment, without labels, with just this awareness and receptivity. Breathing in and breathing out. This is a practice of being here and living this life right now.
If you notice you're waiting for something to happen, treat this like you would any other thought and come right back here to what is happening, even though it may seem like nothing. You are living. This is life right here. In the stillness, in the subtle movement, in the listening, in the being present and bearing witness. This awareness is spacious. This bearing witness is engagement. This silence is the womb of all possibilities. Dwelling like this in meditation establishes a new normal. Listen and feel. No judgment, direct sensation. No labels, direct vibration.
Keeping your eyes closed, continue to listen and to feel the subtle sensations in your body. You are whole. You are present. There are so many possibilities from this place of stillness. Continue to sit with your eyes closed, but give yourself some deeper breaths now. This is a practice of anchoring your attention right here to the possibility of waking up to who you really are in the moment at hand and all potential that can exist, that you can engage in. As you sit with your eyes closed, I want to read you a poem by the Irish philosopher John O'Donohue. Deep within every life, no matter how dull or ineffectual it may seem, something eternal is happening. When you are faithful to the risk and ambivalence of growth, you are engaging in your life. The soul loves risk. It's only through the door of risk that growth can enter. Possibility and change become growth within the shape of time that we call our day. Days are where we live. The rhythm shapes our lives. Each new day offers possibilities that were never seen before. To engage with honor the full possibility of your life is to engage in a worthy way the possibility of your new day. When we dwell in the silence, when we dwell in meditation in the beingness, it's like in the ancient Vedic tradition where they, they do the art of archery, they pull back, they talk about the importance of pulling back the bow so that the arrow may take aim or you may aim the arrow in whatever direction you want. That's what meditation is. It's pulling back the bow and letting go of the binds, the binding thoughts, the habits, the assumptions, letting go of dwelling in the future or hanging out in the past and just engaging in this moment right now where you're pulling back the bow and you can when you come out of meditation slowly, as you're doing now, aim your arrow. What do you want to aim for today? When you're ready, you can open your eyes all the way if you haven't already. And consider this awake presence of yours. It has so much power to Create a beautiful day, one moment like this at a time. Thank you for meditating with me.